Hey, Dr. Rachel Langley from Pine Ridge Family Medicine here today to talk to you about blood pressure. Blood pressure is called the silent killer for a reason. Lots of people have it and they don't have a clue. But that pressure that's building up in your veins and arteries is actually kind of breaking away at the smallest blood vessels in your body. And those blood vessels are in important places. They're in your brain, they're in your heart, they're in your eyes, they're in your kidneys. Those are all things that we want to stick around. That's why we check blood pressure every time. It's a vital sign. It tells us a lot about you. I mean, if you're acutely ill and it's too low, it can tell us you might be in shock. And if it's too high, it might mean that you've been exercising or that you just had some caffeine or that you're really stressed out. Those are all normal and healthy reasons to have high blood pressure. But if you have blood pressure on a regular basis that's too high, above generally 140 of the top number is considered the highest that you can have and still be healthy and 90 as the bottom number. <clears throat> Some of those numbers change if you have other illnesses going on, other chronic health conditions. But generally, if you're walking around at, one four, at over 140, over 90, especially when you're sleeping at night, bad news. It's slowly hurting your blood vessels. <clears throat> so what can we do about it? There's lots of easy medications to take. A lot of them are, have uh, really low side effects. Uh, just a, a pill a day can sometimes be all that you need to decrease your risk of stroke, decrease your risk of heart attack. It's one of my favorite things to treat. But often it's hard to tell if someone really has high blood pressure or if it's just that they happen to be in the doctor's office, what's called white coat syndrome, that they always have high blood pressure when they come into the office, but at home it's just fine. So that's why I really recommend having your own blood pressure cuff if this is something that you've been thinking about recently. The, they sell ones for the wrist, those are okay, but the really good ones are the ones that go around your upper arm. So how do we make sure that you're getting a blood pressure reading that's accurate and helpful for your doctor? One of my favorite readings is to check first thing in the morning before you even roll out of bed. That's the best indicator to me of what your blood pressure has been all night. So maybe even before you get out of bed, try to get that blood pressure cuff on your arm, maybe doze for another couple of minutes and see what it is. It's not the best way to do the reading. The best way to do the reading is sitting up, but it tells me what your blood pressure's likely been overnight. In fact, if we're really worried and we have access to it, sometimes what I'll do is a ambulatory blood pressure monitor. That means you wear a blood pressure cuff that automatically turns on and off about every 15 minutes. It's a big hassle. A lot of people hate it, especially trying to sleep with it, checking their blood pressure all night. But that's the gold standard for seeing what your blood pressure is while you're sleeping. Because if it's still high while you're sleeping, I mean, obviously you haven't just worked out and you haven't taken caffeine. You're not supposed to be stressed out about anything. But if you're holding out of stress or your blood pressure is just high during the night, that's a good indicator that we need to get you on some kind of medication. So you've got a blood pressure cuff. It's, uh, I assume it's automatic, not like this one. Sorry, this is the one that I just pulled from the clinic room. So you look for this place that lines up. It says artery right there on mine. It lines up with your inner elbow right there, your antecubital fossa in doctor speak. You line it up right there. It's got to be above your elbow. You should be able to bend your elbow back and forth even when it's on. Put that blood pressure cuff on pretty snug. There are different sizes of blood pressure cuff. Uh, the, uh, it usually marks on here about how, uh, what the, the size is. This is an adult size. <clears throat> and somewhere else on the strap, it usually says how big your arm can be. See, it says adult size, 25 to 40 centimeters of circumference. And that's roughly an estimate of how big your arm can be and for this to be a good measure of your blood pressure. You can get a decent measure with the wrong size but uh, it's better to have the right size, obviously. And sometimes it even says which side of the fabric is supposed to get, be against your skin. So you look for that artery marking that's right where your, uh, the inside of your elbow goes. You try to get it wrapped pretty snug around your arm. Usually the automatic ones have little latches that you can pull through and adjust it better than the one I have. <clears throat> and then your positioning is important for getting a good blood pressure too. Ideally, you're in a seated position you want your arm to be about at heart level. You want the cuff to be at heart level. So sometimes that means you have an armrest that's just the right height. This is a little bit too low. So really you want to rest it on a table, maybe a desk in front of you and try to relax that arm. You want to be sitting in your chair for about five minutes to really give you time to relax for your heart rate to settle down to get a good blood pressure reading. And then you push the button and think about the last time you went on vacation, 
take some deep breaths. Try to relax as much as you can to really get a good base blood pressure for what it is when you're not stressed out. Getting a couple readings a day can be really helpful. Talk to your doctor about what your doctor wants you to check. Uh, sometimes they have a little computer monitor that even keeps track of what your readings have been. You just have to scroll through it. That's kind of handy. Or apps. There's all sorts of cool technology going on. But no matter what, it's, it's checking your blood pressure, which is a really good sign of how healthy your blood vessels are. So I've been asked, what does a, how does a blood pressure cuff measure this? So imagine your heart is pumping. It's a pump. That's what it does. And it's got all these arteries and veins that go out from it. They go out to the body and they come back. Basically, they're a tube, though. The heart pumps blood and it goes around the tube and comes back and the heart pumps it again. So you can kind of imagine that. So when your heart is not actively pumping and it's between beats, there's some pressure in that system just from the the tube pressing down on the blood and from the blood being present in the tube. And actually, in, in real life, our arteries have muscles inside the linings of those tubes. The arterial linings have muscles that are controlled by our hormones that affects our blood pressure too. So those tubes, as we're imagining this little system, can actually get smaller and tighter depending on what your hormones are doing in your body, whether you're about to go run a marathon or whether you're sitting on your couch, they're going to respond differently and create different blood pressures. That's getting a little in depth though. Okay, so you've got your system and then that number, that, uh, that pressure of the system just sitting there without the heart pumping is the diastolic or bottom number of your blood pressure. So that's what that is. The top number tends to be higher because that's the pressure when your heart squeezes. So the maximal force that your heart can generate is, is how much pressure is going to spin around in that tubular system. And that's what that top number is. It's all measured in millimeters of mercury, uh, which is a measurement of pressure. Um, and so that's what those two numbers mean. The way that a blood pressure cuff works is it actually creates a tourniquet. It cuts off all the blood to your arm. And it's waiting for you when the, the doctor or nurse puts their stethoscope uh, and your elbow there. What they're waiting is to hear your heartbeat again. So they tighten it up, tighten it up, tighten it up until they can't hear your heartbeat. They know that as the pressure drops slowly, they can start hearing your heartbeat once they get down below that upper pressure that your heart can generate. So your heart has to be able to overcome the pressure in the tourniquet. So you've got this tourniquet pumped up to 200 millimeters of mercury. Your heart isn't going to be able to pump blood into your arm at 200 millimeters of mercury unless your blood pressure is super high. It's going to need to get down past 140 if you have a healthy blood pressure. So that's why we slowly take the pressure off of that cuff until your heart can finally start beating and pushing blood there. And then the lower number we can hear when your heartbeat starts going away, when we can't hear it. Because that's when the blood is able to make the full circulation without us having, uh, without being obstructed by the tourniquet at all. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea why blood pressure is an important thing to control, what we're measuring when we put that blood pressure cuff on you, and how the whole system works. I think it's all really interesting. So stay tuned for some more little medical tidbits from me in the future. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just push that button and you'll be able to see when our new videos come out. Thanks.